Okay. You know, well, you know what happened today. I got my dad gone charger from a scooter. And as we speak, it's out there on the deck right now, hooked up to my scooter, charging that battery. It works. Yeah! <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Uh, Kind of a sad day. Somebody located me. One of my uh, buddies from my army days. I was in the artillery. I. Uh, I was in A Battery 2nd Howitzer Battalion 28th Artillery. And I was in the 5th Gun Session. We had five guns in our bat, and A Battery we had five guns. And these guns are 155 Howitzers. The shells that fires in that thing is about two foot high, maybe a little higher. They weigh 92 pounds, and they packed quite a punch, and they were very loud. And across the parade field on the other side, there was another outfit. They was in the artillery, too. Well, 14th Armored Cavalry was over there, too. That was a tank outfit. And but uh, the other artillery outfit, they fired the what they call the eight-inch gun. That sucker was about it was almost four foot tall. The shell, I don't know how much it weighed, but it was huge. And. A couple times a year, we had to go on maneuvers, which just means we go out training, we go out in the field, and we're firing these, we're practice firing and all that stuff. And uh, this time we were at Grafenwehr, which is a place where we go to train is out in the boondock. This is in Germany. And uh, I had a friend in that other outfit that fired them eight inch. Eight inch means it's pretty big around, you know. Um, but them shells had to weigh at least, I'd say, 200, 250 pounds. And boy, when they went off, you knew it. And one day, uh, they had a mess tent set up for the 28th Artillery, and they had a mess tent set up for that other outfit that fired their radiators. And there, and this right around, we were in there eating lunch in our 28th tent. And in that other, in that other tent right next to us, we were, you know, sitting there eating, everybody running their mouth and talking. And this happened in a split second. When those shells go overhead, they're not really high. Well, they're coming in, and you can hear them. They don't make a whistling sound or something. Like, like, you can hear them go And 
And in that split second, I heard that and I thought, what's that thing going over here for, over us? It should be going way out there in the firing range. But it was an eight inch, one of them eight inches. And they made, when they had a fire in order to come down, they made a mistake. I don't know if they put too much power charge in there or put the wrong elevation, deflection, and all that stuff. I don't know. All I know, it come in, you can hear it coming. And this is all in a split second. Your mind don't really think, you know. In hindsight, when I heard that, I should have hit the deck. But all of a sudden, it went into the mess tent right next to us, where my friend was at. It, I can't remember how many it killed. That thing went off. You could feel the concussion from it. That's how close it was. And uh, the, I, I can't remember how many it killed. But uh, it, and we really didn't know at that time. We didn't know it was a shell from. Uh, we didn't know mother we got herself out of the attack, you know. I, and after it exploded, everybody jumped up, started running. Some people started running over there to where the tent was at, but it had blown all the crap. Uh, my friend was over there, he died. He died. His name, I. Uh, he died. And one of a good friend of his was sitting pretty close to him, and he got wounded, but he didn't die. And he's the one that sent sent me a message today. And I accidentally, I just about didn't catch the message because it, it did it on Facebook. And I very rarely check, <sighs> very rarely check my email, you know, my message on Facebook. But he was telling me that last week was the anniversary of that time that happened. Uh, I've been, I've done, I was on, in that artillery outfit for several years, and I was involved in firing many, many rounds on our 155 Harrison. Now, I forgot where I was at. Now I forgot where I was at. Let me check that thing. Go for a stop recording. Guess what's come today? The cotton picking battery charger for my scooter. <laughs> yazzy, yazzy, yazzy. <laughs> and as we speak, it's out there on our scooter charging that battery. And I checked, I did it, put it on there about 12 o'clock today, and I went and checked it, and sure enough, it's charging it up. Shoot. So, why am I yawning so much? I'm drinking flavored water.
but so good news on that end kind of a sad day today I got reminded of something I hadn't thought about in years I had a friend that he was in artillery too but he was in the one across the brave river most uh, he was killed um uh, I'd say about a hundred feet away from me. Uh, I was on, we were, my outfit was A battery, second house train, 28 field artillery. And the guns that we were on was 155 howitzer, self propelled. They kind of looked like a tank with a huge gun on it. Those shells that we fired weighed 92 pounds. And I think we could send one about 15 to 20 miles. The outfit across from us, they was on those eight inches, which is a lot bigger than ours. I guess their shells weighed about 200, maybe 250 pounds. And they was about they was about they was over three feet tall. But and every year, about twice a year, we'd have to go on maneuvers. And that's where you go out in the boondocks and you practice firing your guns and all that stuff. And um, and we was going, we was out there. It's in Grafenfeld, Germany. Everybody just called it Graf for short. And uh, this friend of mine, he was in that outfit to fire them made inch guns. And back in the area where you're bivouacked at, they had mess tents set up. They had a mess tent for their outfit a mess tent for our out. They sit right side by side. And we was in there eating, you know, and having a good time and talking and that same thing next to us. They was having their lunch. But there was another eight inch outfit that was out the field firing. We didn't know it at the time. Um, wow. <sighs> just bothered me to even think about it. But we were just sitting there eating, you know, and, and, and talking, you know, and just, just kick back, relaxing, you know, and the same thing over in the eight inch hearts uh, tent. And all of a sudden, when, when those shells fire, if you happen to be in the path before they go overhead, you can hear them. They don't whistle like that. that they go like, <laughs> you can hear it going through there. You can almost, you can almost see them. That's how big them shells was. And um, it's almost like a shadow goes by. That's how quick. You can't see it quick, good enough to know what it is. But you know what it is because you know you've been there, done that. And I heard that thing, and I was, and in a split second, I'm like. Wow, what's he doing going over the area here? And then there was this explosion. Uh, it, it hit the mess tent right next to me. Uh, I don't know how many got killed in that. I don't remember. But my friend got killed. It, but I ain't correct, Sam. My friend got killed. My, correct where it said my 
my friend was killed. Um, uh, I, I still remember how I, I, I remember he was torn to all the pieces. Cause after it happened, you know, and we knew, we didn't know what was wrong, but some of the guys just took off running, getting the hell away from there. And some of us run over there to that tent, what was a tent, to see if we could help somebody. And Uh, I was, I can't believe I stayed around for that. I saw a lot of dead bodies. And I started looking, and some of them were tore up so bad you couldn't tell them if you knew them. You could, you wouldn't know it by looking at them. The face. The only reason I knew my friend was I was looking at. You know, we have to wear these dog tags, and it's got your name and everything on it. And the second set of dog tags I looked at was my friend. Um. He had a good friend over there too that was wounded pretty bad. I didn't even recognize him. He was too up so bad. But I never, I never did. I was just in stunned for the next couple of weeks about it, and so I don't know if they decided what happened. It, something happened when when you load those guns. When the fire order comes down, they give you the elevation, deflection, all that, and the size charge, powder charge that you put in there. So your shell goes, your shell don't fire like a bullet. It goes in the breech first. They ram right in home. And then they put a power charge behind that thing. It might be a charge five, charge six, charge four. And then they, when they put that charge behind there, they close the breech. And then there's a little thing that you open up and you put a firing pin in there and that's like a bullet there and, and then you pull the lanyard and it hits that thing and it ignites that charge and it, the round takes off. So they, they either got their deflections or elevations and all that stuff uh, uh, or got the charge wrong. And if if I was an ammunition specialist, I'm the one to cut the charges that goes in the gun when the thing goes. I don't put it in there. I just get the charge and get it, and get the right charge and hand it to them. Now, if their ammo specialist got the charge wrong, that could have been it. Or the the board observer that's calling in the charges and everything to put he could have got his stuff wrong. I don't know. But that was a horrible sight. Horrible sight. And he was the only guy When I got on past or something and I wasn't going over to my girlfriend's, 
me and him would pile around together and uh, and he didn't wear he and when I went anytime I went anywhere off base on pass I wore my uniform I never wore civilian clothes on them. A lot of the guys in my outfit, they, they had civilian clothes they'd wear. I didn't do it. I was proud of my uniform. And he was too. I never wore a stitch of civilian clothes the whole time I was over in Germany. I was always in uniform. Um, but I lost a good friend that day. <sighs> yep. And for some reason right now, I can't remember his name. I was just talking to my brother guy today about it, well, on, on, on a message thing. What the heck was his name? Uh, his last name was Murray. M U R R E Y. And he was from Hollywood, Florida. But we wasn't in the same outfit. No, folks, I tell you right now, I don't know. Just looking at that, I don't know if I could have, I don't know how I'd have done it in wartime seeing dead bodies. I don't know about sure bottom, but they were tore all to pieces. And I think one guy actually lost a leg <laughs> That's just terrible, Elijah. You would think that, that would, after all these years, that wouldn't bother me. And that that was in probably nineteen. Hmm, that was probably nineteen sixty-two. Cause that's the year that Kennedy, when Eisenhower was going out and Kennedy was elected, that was, cause that was just, that that was going on at the same time. Cause I remember sitting out there after all that happened, and listening to a, a radio of a, a American station about the election and then that Kennedy had won. Was it 64? I think it was 62. Let's see, Eisenhower went in in 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. It was 61 or 62, I can't remember. I can't remember. I remember my commander in chief was Dwight D. Eisenhower. And then my next commander in chief was John Fitzgerald Kennedy. And then he was assassinated and Lyndon Bain Johnson become my my commander in chief and I didn't like Lyndon Rain Johnson for shit. He was an obnoxious son of a gun. Man. Anyway. Turn them on. 
in the morning when I get up. What time? It's 12.07 a.m. In the morning when I get up, you can better believe I'm going to get out there and yank the covers off up the, if it's not raining. And take a ride, Clyde. <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, and that, that charger, it's actually a better charger than what came with that scooter. It's, it's a fantastic charger. But I'm going to try it out tomorrow. I ain't going to go, I'm not going to go far. My daughter don't, she don't trust that scooter anymore. But I can, I'll be able to tell pretty quick if it's, if it's gonna uh, uh, be all right. I guess I was yawning, you know. I slept 15 hours night before last. 15 hours. Last night, I only slept four. So I'm sleepy, I guess. Hey. <sighs> oh, man. Um. I got to figure out some way to get more. Maybe I'll, maybe things will pick up now that I can get out and about now. Um, my daughter told me to quit talking about money because she said sometimes it does sound like you're soft begging. She was talking about the other night, that lady that left that uh, uh, 150 British pounds. She said it sounded like I was trying to bait people into sending money just because she did. But I, I, I was just thanking the lady, you know, that, that's all I was doing. Uh, so I guess I'll just quit yapping about money. I mean, <laughs> I'm starting to say something again, but I'm not going to say any more about that. Um, however, no, shoot, that'd be talking about money too. Yes, it would. I know when I got out of the army, that was right, right when Vietnam was starting up. And I know some of my other friends was gonna stay in, and I know they were gonna be shipped to Vietnam. So I might, I might have lost some friends, some army friends of mine in Vietnam. I don't know. I just found out my Uncle Harold, that's my mama's brother, he was born in 1928. He joined the Navy at 16. I don't know how he done that. And he was in World War II. And he stayed in the Navy for 24 years. When I was in the Army, I didn't realize he was still in the Navy. He hadn't been discharged yet. <laughs> hmm. And uh, when he got discharged from the Navy in Pensacola, Florida, he went to work for the college 
there. I forget which college it was. And in, in maintenance in the college. And he worked for the college 22 years and retired. He was drawn a 24 year pension from the Navy. He was drawn a pension from the college, the, the state of Florida, and he was drawing Social Security. So he was triple dipping, triple dipping. And last time I seen Uncle Harold was maybe eighty, maybe eighty four, nineteen eighty four. And as he was getting ready, he was visiting Mama, and he was getting ready to leave. And he said, "Where's a good wing place? Get some wings. I won't stop getting me some wings while I get out of town." And boy, I love wing, a place called Wings and Curls. I said, I know just the place you want. And I said, follow me. And he said, follow me. And we got the Wings and Curls. And we sit down there and we, we probably ate, we probably ate about 40 wings. <laughs> or wing pieces. It wasn't whole wings. He loved them. And for some reason, wings and curls went out of business. I don't know what happened now. But that was sure some good wings. Wings and curls. <sighs> Folks, on that note, that's my story today, and I'm sticking to it. And I'll see you in the next one. Matter of fact, I'll let you know in the next video how my ride went. I'll take a video of that for sure. See ya. GoPro stop recording. <laughs>